Nigeria is known as the economic powerhouse of Africa. But I think the biggest asset is its people. With 200 million people, Nigeria has the workforce to drive the continent. In fact, whatever happens in Nigeria will happen definitely throughout the continent. There are a lot of challenges dealing with a country uh, so big, so diverse. Nigeria has a highly mobile population who go abroad for various reasons. There are a lot of Nigerian doctors who are being recruited. These are people with regular visas, regular permits going to these countries. Then we've had people looking for greener pastures, usually through irregular means. We've had people who were trafficked, coerced into moving to different countries and to uh, very, very difficult conditions. And those who took to the desert and the high seas to find this greener pasture. Since this conflict began in the Northeast, millions of people have been displaced. Between the Northwest, North Central, and Northeast, we have more than three million people displaced uh, by violence, by conflict. Some people also are moving simply because the land can no longer provide. They have to go to a place where they can survive. To make sure that this country move forward, it's important to make sure that we work hand in hand with the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people, not leaving anyone behind. Given that it has a very young population, with 75% of the population under the age of 35, this is a country that we should all work with. And this is why IOM is here. We started this journey in uh, 2001 with two desks at uh, UNICEF office in Lagos. IOM uh, signed the agreement with the government to assist the government in creating a migration framework. From 2005, we were assisting with the integration of Nigerians coming back, mostly from Italy, Germany, and some other European countries. In 2009, we took the conceptual leap to assess the nature of mobility in the country. And that gave us the basis then, two years later, to start the complete migration governance under the Tent EDF looking at counter-trafficking, border management, border security, and the sort of policies that we need to create to get that done. Fast forward to 2014, uh, one of the major steps that we took was the migrant health assessment centers that we opened, both in Lagos and Abuja. And this center provides medical assessments for migrants traveling to the US, Canada, the UK, New Zealand, and Australia. And this year, we're on track, despite the many COVID restrictions, to assess 45,000 migrants going to these countries. In 2014, you may recall that uh, it was that year the Chibok girls were abducted. IOM started the psychosocial support. We started expanding our capacity, uh, expanding our footprint by hundreds of staff. Hundreds that provide direct assistance to those displaced. Operating in what initially were inaccessible areas. IOM is managing two key enablers in the Northeast. That's the humanitarian hubs and displacement tracking matrix. DTM provided data so that agencies can deliver and can have effective targeting of their services. The hubs provide the accommodation, the meeting space, and even telecommunication to make us more effective in delivering and to be a more solid partner to those INGOs who are implementing services. In 2014 also, with the government, the various MDAs, and many different entities we started expanding policy development to improve uh, the structure and, and, and build the capacity of these agencies to deliver. In 2016, we expanded MIDAS, the Migration Information Data Analysis System. Today, Nigeria has the most complex and biggest MIDAS operation system in the world, looking at advanced passenger information system. Passenger name record is even more important in the age of pandemics to properly track and isolate those who've been exposed to diseases. 
So what started as a border management process now expands into public health and infection control. Also within that, that same space, we are working with a lot of NGOs to provide direct assistance to those coming back to Nigeria. Since 2017, IOM has returned under our emergency return, mostly from Libya, about 22,000 Nigerian migrants. What's actually uh, extremely important is to effectively reintegrate them back into their communities. We know they are capable. We know they can pull themselves by their bootstraps. So instead of giving them a handout, we, we give them a hand up in terms of cash-based intervention, our livelihood intervention, so that they move forward despite the conditions in the moment where they are. Today, this conflict is uh, in its 12th year. So hand in hand with the Nigerian government, we are looking at how we can bring peace to the Northeast, how we can improve social cohesion to reduce the level of violence and to give the people the space to thrive and not just to survive. So the more people we can get out of the bush uh, and to back into society, the better it is in terms of disengaging and disassociation and reintegration and reconciliation of low-risk former associates of Boko Haram. This is implemented by mostly Nigerians. Of the 1,500 staff we have here in this country, only 65 of them are foreigners. So the success of IOM here in Nigeria is what the Nigerian staff have put in place day in, day out to deliver to their fellow Nigerians. Some of them have been IDPs themselves. Some of them have seen the impact that such violence have had on them, and they make it their mission to change that. And that's what makes us who we are. And that's what is required to deliver at that level, making IOM Nigeria the agency that it is today. And I'm extremely proud of the team. Nigeria strong, IOM strong. Thank <laughs> you.